What I'm about to share with you may either shock you or not surprise you at all. It might even confuse you. However, my goal is to evoke clarity through my explanations about life and events related to the law of attraction and its true workings. Unfortunately, many of you who are living in a bubble will likely refuse to accept my explanation. From my personal experience and observations, I can tell you that a significant part of this concept has to do with your eternal state of mind. If you have studied Buddhism or practiced meditation, you would understand that these are among many tools available to help you control and comprehend the internal states you experience throughout life, namely your emotions. I honestly believe that the secret by Rhonda Byrne is poorly written and explained. Unfortunately, it doesn't provide the intended enlightenment, but instead draws more suffering into your life. Let's begin with the concept of prayer and its effectiveness. At a point during my meditation retreat, I encountered a pamphlet that provided an example of how prayer can work and fail. Suppose you're in a bad mood and you pray, finding relief for three minutes before the bad mood returns. Would you consider praying every three minutes of the day practical? This approach seems both crazy and exhausting. Despite temporary relief, the bad mood will likely return because as psychotherapy and various are because I have read suggests that many of our actions for life events, such as addictions, will repeat until we heal from whatever is causing these issues within us. In essence, you can't simply wish a bad mood away. You need to dwell deep into the hells of your own mind and be okay with whatever happens. And then you must extradite the root cause of it as it is there to teach you something significant. Believe it or not. Another important point about prayer involves clearing the mental clutter. What do I mean by this? Well, you must make space in your life for what you desire. For example, if you wish for friends, you need to be ready to compromise and sacrifice. If you're selfish all the time, nobody will stand, will want to be around you. Healing from such selfish tendencies may require the use of psychedelics, meditation, psychotherapy, or even journaling. Until you address and heal these issues, you'll find yourself in the same situations repeatedly. You can't expect to foster relationships with men and women if you harbor any kind of animosity towards them. Reacting negatively to their actions only fuels that animosity. In example, misogyny or gender-based bashing. It's essential to remove yourself from environments that perpetuate these attitudes to begin healing. Only then by reacting less to the thoughts or events that trigger you will you stop finding yourself in the same problematic situations whether in friendships or dating. This requires a conscious effort. To emotionally approach situations differently to achieve a different outcome. This is what I like to call breaking a karmic cycle. Whether or not you believe in Buddhism is irrelevant. As Einstein famously said, doing the same thing and expecting different results is insanity. The internal work you do within your mind will be reflected on the outside, although it may sound harsher than it is and requires a significant amount of effort. Life's highs and lows are part of this journey, my friend. Merely asking the universe what you desire is not enough. Even if you do ask, you must be willing to put in the work to see if it truly aligns with what you want. I mean, do you really want that car, job, friends, wife? You have to put in the effort and see what is the result if it actually, if it is what you really want. Because who knows, maybe someone put an idea for you, society inculcates these desires, wants. Maybe it's not something that you want. For instance, if you desire a new car and land a six-figure job but the environment leads to a burnout, you'll find yourself unable to make the purchase due to health issues. Or take me for example, I still have unhealed trauma related to women and family life. Despite wanting to, fun, to have fun and attract what I desire, such, a, such as a healthy woman who maintains her fitness and character, I must continue working on my character and feminine energy by distancing myself from environments where men bash and complain about women and avoiding places rife with misogynistic comments, I'm working towards attracting the right partner. So what I mean is you have to pull yourself out from crappy environments that actually fuel whatever problems you have. You don't want someone to fuel or encourage you or give the ideas that these people are like that. You have to be careful. The process of observing the thoughts and working towards uh, the, I mean, the process of observing the thoughts and being okay with my internal state or your internal state might eventually lead me to attract or you a suitable partner who is attractive in shape and stable qualities, you know. I possess them, but I must remember that it is about connecting with another human being without forcing anything, right? So you might have all these qualities, but if you're trying to force something, it's it doesn't work out always. That That is why there is wisdom behind letting things go and let 
letting them happening. Just do your part. In conclusion, I hope this discussion has been insightful and I look forward to more death in part two where we'll continue exploring the concepts of karma and whatnot. And, you know, so you get a better idea and I hope this helped. Thank you and have a good day.